This being a rugged, adventurous challenge for rugged, adventurous watchers, we've been sent to the back of beyond to test them out. Oh, uh, oh look, watchers. Ah! I've got one of the latest offerings from Garmin, the Phoenix 6 Pro Solar. And I've got the Amazfit T-Rex Pro at less than a quarter of the price, but with very similar features. Rugged, military-grade build. Check. Smart notifications. Check. All right, all right, get this. 36 hours battery with the GPS on, plus there's solar paneling in the power glass, giving me an additional four hours of battery in sunlight. OK, that is fancy. I don't have solar panel, but I do have 40 hours of battery life with the GPS on. Oh. Ha! Well, Georgie, it's not what's on paper that counts. Let's get on with some testing. And first up, usability. Now, one of the main features of both watches is fitness tracking. I have 48 activity profiles to choose from. I actually have a hundred to choose from. What? And some of them are really niche. Look, there's actually belly dancing on here. Oh. Can't imagine why. <laughs> anyway, we're going to obviously go for hiking, yes. so should we start? Let's go and hike. Right. I'm off. As am I. For our woodland warm-up, we're looking at the watch's basic features and how easy they are to control. To track our activities, both watches use multiple GPS systems. Although mine uses four instead of three for better accuracy. Plus, it has an inbuilt compass for navigating on the go. Ah, but I can download maps to this and I can follow them. Yeah, they are very teeny tiny maps though, aren't They're they? So very small. teeny tiny. OK, mine can't download maps, but who needs that when you can go traditional? Uh, where are we, the 1900s? When it comes to the watch's displays, both have a 1.3-inch colour screen, but my budget Amazfits has a slightly higher resolution, 360 by 360 pixels to the Garmin's 260. I've also noticed that you're having to use buttons. Yes. Mine, my friend, is touchscreen. Ah, but in water, <laughs> ah, touchscreen, it's useless. But it does also have buttons. Oh, you've got buttons too. And now I've got a soggy wrist, so thanks for that. Sorry. And, of course, both watches let us review our stats once back at base. The Garmin, via the Garmin Connect app, there is a lot of data available. It's a lot. It can be quite intimidating. And the Amazfit, via its own app called Zep. What I like is that you sort of have your top stats at the top there, and then you can scroll down for a little bit more detail. What I would say is that, looking at how far we've walked, we've come to a total of 1.49 kilometres. Is that all? Yeah. Oh. Uh, shall we step it up? Yeah. Come all on. right. We might be lagging, but both the high-end Garmin and the budget Amazfit have put on a solid performance. Round one is a draw. On to round two, then. Durability. An adventure watch should be built to withstand the elements, as well as the odd bump and bash. But these two go beyond the call of duty, claiming military-grade toughness. My Garmin claims to be waterproof down to 100 metres. Oh, taking the plunge already. Yeah. Uh, as does my Amazfit, also 100 metres. OK. Although we're unlikely to encounter 100 metre depths on the average outdoor adventure, a drop into shallow water is not uncommon, but it'll take more than a quick dunk to trouble even my cheap Amazfit. All right, then. How will it cope with being made into a giant ice cube? My Garmin claims to be cold-proof to minus 20 degrees. Ah, oh, that's practically toasty. My Amazfit reckons it'll survive up to minus 40. And in grand TV tradition, here's one we made earlier. But to see if our watches have survived, we have to crack those icy shells, and that means a drop test. And it's a big one. If our watches want to survive a drop from these stomach-churning heights, they'll have to be truly tough. Right, well, I know you said that the walk wasn't that intrepid and that we should up the game, but I, mean, I didn't think you meant literally, like. This is my idea of fun. We need to talk about your ideas. <laughs> my more expensive Garmin is made of reinforced polymer with a titanium bezel, and that solar charging lens is covered with scratch-resistant Gorilla Glass. But is scratch-resistant going to be enough? <gasps> is this still your idea of fun, Georgie? Oh, no, maybe no. not. How do I turn around? <laughs> My Amazfit claims to be shock resistant with a polycarbonate body and tempered glass screen. Oh. oh, God, don't look down. Too late. 
Let's hope it's made of tougher stuff than me. OK, X marks the spot. Three, two, one. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> well, that didn't sound good. Time for my Garmin to take a leap of faith. Ready? Three, two, one. Oh. Not the best drop. Just a bit to the left, please, cameraman. You had one job, Otis. Drop it on the right spot. We survived. We survived, but what our monsters. watches have done. You know what? I've got faith because Garmin now has to build a pretty solid bit of kit. So, Looking screen's good. still working. And yes, we still got functionality. Well done, Garmin. Come on, cheap plastic bit of. <laughs> hey! Right. Oh, it's all over for yours. Oh. It's me, Georgie, wake up! Oh, no! I'm gonna have to give it mouth to mouth. I no, don't... no, no, it's, it's broken. That's really disappointing. Despite claiming to be freeze-proof and shock-proof, being dropped in a giant ice cube was just too much for my amaze fit. I hope you've got a backup for the next challenge. I do, actually. Oh, right. I could actually get three more for the price of your watch. Touché. Ah, but a saving of several hundred quid doesn't mean jack if your watch is a goner. That's round two to the Garmin. So it is all to play for, with one round left as we get the blood pumping with a scramble for the summit. In the battle of the adventure watches, my big brand Garmin can claim to be the toughest. Yes! It's me, Georgie, wake up! But when it comes to usability, my Amazfit keeps up with the big guns. I'm off. So how will they fare in our last test, accuracy? This new wave of adventure watches come with all manner of sensors, from altitude to blood oxygen levels. But these advanced metrics have to be accurate, especially for serious outdoor adventurers like us. <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to be comparing them against the industry standards for heart rate, blood oxygen and altitude. Shall we begin the ascent? Yes. My heart rate, 69. What are you currently on? Well, mine says 89. I'm not that unfit. <laughs> Our chest straps measure heart rate with ECG, the same method used by cardiologists. Get the blood pumping. That's it, get your stroll on. But our watches use optical heart rate monitoring, sending light into the skin and reading how much comes back. Right, I feel like let's just let our hearts come to a steady beat. <laughs> so. so my watch is now saying 62 and my ECG is saying 68. So mine's saying 70 on my watch and 71 on my ECG. So, so... I would say that's reasonably accurate. Yeah, but if we're nitpicking, I think mine was just a tiny little bit more accurate. So, my affordable maze fit wins at heart rate accuracy. But there's another feature to test that's burst onto the smartwatch scene. Blood oxygen saturation tracking, also measured using light absorption. It's great for extreme athletes like us, you know, like mountaineers and marathon runners. The lofty peaks of Worcestershire aren't likely to give us altitude sickness, but pulse oximetry can also help to detect if you've been overdoing the training and even give early warning signs of general health issues. A normal blood oxygen level is 95% or above, but do our watches give an accurate reading? OK, so I have 95 on my watch, 96 on my sensor. OK. So I've already got a reading coming in on my oximeter. Yep. That is saying 99. Oh. And my watch, that's saying 95. Ooh, that's a 4% discrepancy. And what's your one? Mine is a 1% discrepancy. And with that clear win for the Garmin, it's one all in the accuracy test so far. And what's the next one? Elevation. Ah, and there's no fluctuation with elevation when you're at the top. You're at the top. Where is the top? It's over there. Both our watches have a barometric altimeter, using air pressure to tell us how high up we are. Now all we need to do is make it to the summit before sundown. Right, race it to the top. Ah! <laughs> yes! Melvin is mine! I have conquered the summit! <laughs> oh, look at that. Right, should we take our elevation Ooh, readings? Good idea. I've got 328. 328, yeah. OK. Mine is coming in at 330. 
Shall I check it against yes. the, the trusty map? So we are currently here, and it currently says 329. Oh, so we're one either side. So that's a draw for altitude. With the Garmin's win for pulse oxygen and the Maze Fit's win for heart rate, that makes the accuracy test a dead heat. So the final score is 3-2 to the Garmin, which means I'm king of the hill. But is he the king of the hill? No, I don't think so. I don't think he is either, Georgie. Yes, I am king of the hill. I won three of the challenges. There you go, Garmin, all day, go! Listen, this is four times the price of that. Yeah, mm. and probably lasts four times as long. There's no probably in it. This was an amazing watch at just over 100 quid, and it kept up with that nearly all the way. Exactly. At that price point, I wore it all day thinking there'd be a catch, and honestly, I didn't find one.